Hey everybody, this is Joe from the F-Stops here. Uh, I've made some videos recently about AI, masking, layers, Capture One 23, and Lightroom 12, and about how the big thing that we wanted from Capture One version 23 was better AI masking, and we did not get it. And how the ability to mask subjects, parts of subjects, skies, objects, is just better in Lightroom Classic, and I stand by that, and generally speaking, it's true. But are there situations where the masking tools in Capture One are actually better, or easier, or just smoother to use? And I think it's an important question to ask. And so let's examine complicated masking, and let's look at the same picture. This is Capture One version 23, which is the most recent version as of November 22 when I'm recording this. And this is the same picture in Lightroom Classic version 12, the most recent version of that. So we want to mask out the subject, but uh, importantly, we want to mask the subject and the tricycle. So we can come to our masking tool right there and just click on the person. And this is the thing we want in Capture One. It's not there and it's just way easier. We're going to say, I want this person. And then I'm gonna say the entire person, great, create mask. And because this is a more complicated scenario, well, it's, it's quite imperfect. We are imperfect in a couple ways. The first is going to be the hair, how we have these gaps in between and there's really no easy way to remove those. We might just have to live with them. But even more importantly, we're going to find the bike and even parts of the subject are in fact not masked. And we would need to manually make that happen. And we have two ways to do so. So the first way is we could add an object and we could come over and we can click on part of the bike. It's gonna do some analysis and it's going to, well, add in part of the bike. But I'm gonna to have to do this multiple times. I have to keep coming back to an object, adding part of the bike, and this would take me a little while. So while it's a nice feature for complicated structures such as this, it's really not gonna work well. Well, what's another way that we could do it? Well, I could come over and I could add using a brush, and I'd want to use something called the Auto Mask tool, which is this checkbox, checkbox right here. And that tries to determine if there's a difference between the center of the brush tool and the edge. And if there is a difference, it uses that to define the edge of the newly masked area. So we're going to bring our feathering up because we're adding to a mask. And we're going to try to add in to our subject. Come in there, come around the wheel, come through there. We're going to think come over here and maybe make our size a little bit smaller if we can at all help it and come through here and do this wheel as well and that's great but auto masking by no means was perfect and we have now these areas that are in between parts of the bike and on the edges and is there a great way to remove that well the best way is to subtract using again a smaller brush we could use color range or luminance range, but in a situation like this, that would tend to start deleting parts of the mask. We do want parts of the bike. And so this would be a more complicated mask to actually work with and to make. Can we do this a little bit easier inside of Capture One? Well, let's see. I'm gonna to come to Capture One. I'm gonna create a new empty adjustment layer. And I don't have the ability to select a subject. I still wish we had that. It would be an amazing benefit, but we don't. So let's go ahead and add using our draw mask tool. Now I'm going to right click, increase the size to something relatively uh, close to the size of our subject. And I'm just going to come around and try to mask our subject. Come in, get the bike, come all around. Going to go up through here to the leg, come through the tricycle, and we're going to come up to there. Now, of course, this is still quite imperfect, as we can see, and the auto mask tool might get rid of some of these excess areas. Let's find out. 
it got rid of some of them and did not fix others. I still think that the AI masking tool in Capture One is better than just that uh, the auto mask tool in Capture One is better than the auto mask in Lightroom by a little bit. I'm gonna come in and I'm going to fill the mask. And so let's go ahead, it filled in those areas. I'm going to fill in the remainder here like so and add in the bike and come in here all right so we have the same problems from before i'm going to have areas that need to be removed and you see that the the types of areas are going to be very very similar is there an easier way and in fact there is i'm going to come over to my eraser tools they're also the same tools up here and instead of the erase mask tool which is unbelievably similar to what we have inside of lightroom we have the magic eraser tool which is going to look for small areas and types of pixels so let's go ahead and use this i'm going to click on the magic tool and click inside of this area here and it's just going to remove it that area there we're going to click to the edge here to see if it can remove some of these overlap edges that we don't want and in fact it's going to do a pretty reasonable job i'm going to come up here to the hair and let's see what we can make happen up here now i'm going to add back in some of the hair area here but I wonder if I can get rid of some of this area around. And in fact, it's going to do a pretty reasonable job. Open this back up. It's gotten rid of some of the area of the spokes inside of there. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to remove that area right there. Area inside of the spokes. And it is, by and large, keeping the spokes themselves. Now, if it does this a little bit too much, I can grab my brush tool, and of course, I can paint this back in, as I'd be able to do here or in Lightroom equivalently. But because the auto mask tool, I would argue, is a little bit more reliable inside of Capture One, my ability to do some refinement here is actually pretty fast and pretty easy. So I'm able to remove these areas around the spokes. I'm able to add back in the shoe. I'm able to come in here. Let's go ahead and add this back in. And it should be able to detect the edge there of the tire, and it did. Come up here. We're gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna just decrease my size make sure that I can mask this area back in and of course this type of brushwork would be able to do in Lightroom no problem the brushing back in it's the removal portion that's really the difference maker I'm going to use my magic tool to get rid of that little excess on top of there might have to add that back in and probably subtract small area right there on the side of the hair so that was faster and cleaner than it was here. So what's the takeaway from this? Well, the takeaway is that if you have an uncomplicated person or discrete object, or if you want to mask the sky, or if you want to mask parts of the face, the eye, the, the lips, the teeth, Lightroom is amazing and it is fast and it is accurate and I love it. I, I think that the features presented here are great. But if you have a complicated mask where you need to remove specific small areas, Capture One actually does it better. So this is by no means me saying that the masking inside of Capture One is perfect and does not need to be adjusted because most certainly I want inside of Capture One the types of masking tools that we have here. But it is not to say that you don't have significant masking capacity inside of Capture One. 
All right, so that's what I've got for you today. Uh, I hope this has been helpful and interesting for the conversation about the future of photo editing. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.